and thus the long march began. We were warned that these mountains were treacherous and rife with hostile creatures, but the sight of more of those metallic birds flying about still proved a surprise. They seemed to roam freely across the land without a particular purpose, as if they had become part of the local fauna. Perhaps they were once part of the many experiments the Chaos Empire performed on living creatures, even persons. Although we had spent much time together since we found her in the Heart Mountains, it was only now that I noticed an odd habit Alinea had. She much preferred to walk like us commoners than to float above ground as other elves or fairies possessing the capacity did. Out of curiosity, and lacking anything better to speak of, I decided to ask her about this peculiar habit. She revealed she has done this for, long as, for as long as she remembers, perhaps because her mentor and guardian did so as well. It was then that it occurred to me that I knew nothing of Alinea's past life in the Golden Age beyond her history lessons. I wondered if her childhood had been like mine, with her guardian taking over for her missing parents. She gazed at me, her eyes as alluring as the setting sun. Then she smiled, and I saw for a brief moment a glimpse of something else hiding beneath the surface. I decided not to ask her about her mentor, for fear of bringing back sad memories. Like Malkeshar, she has lived for longer than any other creature on Erdia, and seems intent on leaving her past behind. Okay, uh, you're listening and watching to Cyber Neuro Druid, and I am playing Invasion from the Unknown, and I am playing Scenario 17, Voice of the Armageddon. I have just eaten lots of chocolate and drunk lots of coffee, so I am pretty wired, and uh, I'll be playing this scenario, or at least part of it. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Two days into our journey, we came across a road quite evidently built by our enemies amidst the tall mountains not long ago. A new confrontation was imminent. The air trembles as a loud roar echoes throughout the mountain pass. Have any of you heard anything like that before? No, not really. Whatever it is, it must be enormous. Be on your keenest guard, everyone. Alright, job is to defeat all enemy leaders, and if any of my heroes die, I will lose, and there's an early finish bonus. Um, so, seems like again, the best bet is just to uh, recall mostly powerful units, and just try and punch through, see what I can do. What I will do, because it's a dark scenario with, uh, with fog, is I'll get a couple of bats, just so that I always know what's coming. All right, but first things first, out you go along the road, Malkashar. Um, you might run into something scary, but if you do, it doesn't matter, because you are as tough as nails. Uh, I'm tempted to just straight out kill this, uh, this, this razor bird. Let's see what happens. Can I see anything else down there? No, not really. Okay, good. All right, not as effective as I'd have liked, but could be worse. Okay, and over here I'm going to get bats, and over here I'm going to get a bat, and I'm going to start out with some... Now I could get Felor potentially up a level here, so he seems like a good option. Usually I start out by, rec by recalling weaker troops. Um, and that is what I'm going to most that's what I'm gonna do here so I'll get a blood bat you save a little bit of gold if you do it this way and that sometimes means you can recruit a few more a few more people okay some regular ghosts I think um, just a couple and I'll have something else and the next turn I'm gonna recruit a castle of very powerful troops Maybe just this one fire fairy. 
Um, you know, they get a lot of stick, these fire fairies. Like, if you look at the official strategy guide, it basically says, I mean, I, I should say, I'm not looking at it ahead of time. I'm only looking at it after the relevant scenarios. But what it says about fire fairies is basically don't recall them because they're not very useful. Now, it is true that they are lawful, which means that they're not super effective in the daytime, in the in the nighttime or underground. Um, but in this kind of situation, I mean, having a unit that can deal a lot of fire damage, especially against shark styles, is actually kind of handy. Especially, um, I mean, because shark styles are resistant to pretty much everything else. Um, so... This time I'm going to leave Sir Slow um, behind because I think he, you know, he he could do with a rest. The poor guy. He's been running and running and running, and he is very slow. Um, so for now, I'm going to bring out Lethrade, and I'll see who I want next turn. More razor birds come in, but they don't they don't fly in a way that makes huge amounts of sense. These razor birds. Now, if they, they, this is a Thunderbird, it's actually level 2. Um, gonna attack it with this Blood Bat, and the Blood Bat will go up a level, regardless of what else happens. So that seems like a fair bet. Uh, enemy unit sighted, okay, we've got a Ray Blade down there. Ah, so many enemies around. And you become a Dread. But, um, actually pretty scary unit. For a level 2 unit, they're not too bad at all. I just need to uh, make sure that people don't target them too much, because they do go down easily, especially if there's range attacks around. Okay, so you come and scout out this way. I'm not too worried about getting flanked, but you never know. Okay, and this seems to be the edge of the map, actually. There's only foggy mountains, and the foggy mountains are impassable. So I don't know why you've come all the way around here, but there you are. Alright, Malka Shah, you want to get rid of this one, I think. Alright, um, I mean, they... They're not systematically a threat, but I don't want them hanging around because they could always come and attack me from behind when I'm not expecting it. So it's better to get rid of them. So... To do... Oh, you do so much damage, you guys. Um, what about um, ghosts with their arcane damage? That's more like it. That's not so horrible. Alright, and now you're almost dead, so I do not feel afraid to send out the Fire Fairy to try and get the kill. Fantastic, you're almost up to level 3 now. You just come straight down here, give me some more visibility I hope. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, Erethan, you go into this defensive position. Uh, Elinia can't quite get into a position where she will attract this ray blade out. How much defense does Igor have? He's got basically equal resistances with everything. Good thing about Shrakstal is they're actually not better underground, they are neutral. <clears throat> so I'll just move Alinea down here and put Igor next to her. So I get more visibility out front. All right, now it's recall time. I'm going to have Felor. Now, Verwine the Enchantress is very slow. Um, so I think I'm instead going to go for... Um, definitely Sothinia. Then... Either Sithad or Revelia. Um, and I think Revelia is nearer the level, so I'm going to go for Revelia. And then the three Spectres. My good old friends, Blady, Scythe, and Slashy. All of whom have had at least one after maximum level advancement, and Scythe has had two. 
So my only concern here is that I, there's no one I can really afford to lose apart from the bats and ghosts. Um, but I'll have to deal with that. Okay, so what we've got here are level 1 undead units along with a single ray blade. Um, I don't know why there are undead units here, it doesn't seem to make all that much sense, but never mind. Um, this, so more scouting. Nothing exciting over here. The bird seems to have gone, at least for now. That seems to be... Now you could, in principle, go over there. Um, go here. No, there's, no that's, that's blocked. So you just come straight down. We see a little bit more. And it seems like what these folks are very keen to do is to throw themselves upon my troops. And if they do so in a position where I can defend well, then that's fine. Um, at the moment, not many of them can reach. So actually, it is quite tempting to let them in and let them do their thing. I'd rather that Elinia didn't get attacked. Well, you can see more from there. So what I'm going to do... They can both reach exactly the same point. And Malka Shah, I would like to have him in front, but he can't quite make it. So I'm just going to bring him as far as he can. Maybe the undead are just going to go all in across the bridges, and if so, then I won't actually let them fight me this turn. It's, it's long dark at the moment, um, so I'm not going to get much in the way of light. Um, just going to move everyone down to a defensive position. Okay, I don't know why I didn't move Galas last turn actually. He didn't he doesn't need to stay here. Alright, I think all my units have moved. Yep, and the undead can't reach me, but Okay, they are taking up formation in the middle of the bridge. And there are demons there. There are quite a lot of them. There are Yeah. And normally my inclination for something like this would just be to be as put to push forward as fast as I can, but it uh, doesn't seem like the smartest idea at this point. However, if I bring my spectres down here to attack this ghost, then only one of them will be in range to be attacked. Well, two of them will be, but one of them, one of them by a demon and the other one by the ray blade. There they are, those foul miscreants. You know what to do. Crush them. Crush them all. Okay, we've got a green leader, and he's actually just across the bridge from me. Okay, I could go in with Slashy and come a little bit further. Then what, what I'm instead going to say is I'm going to come up to the end of the bridge and just go, you know, come at me, bro. Um, send in your, your level one units and we'll see what happens. Um, and as long as I've got some big heavy hitters on the front lines, it should be all right. So for instance, Galas can go here. Then Malkeshar can go... Well, Alinea can go here. She can take a few hits. And Alinea maybe should just go behind Galas. 
And Narkeshar can go there, so he doesn't get affected by Elinia's, um, Elinia's nonsense. And now there's several people who can get in on Galas. Um, that's okay. If he gets badly wounded, he can just retreat. A few people can reach down there. Um, so I could put Fellow down there, but it would be a little bit dangerous because people can reach him um, and get the, they can get the Berserk. I, I'd rather have that on his terms, if you see what I mean. So here I could put someone if I wanted to. So you keep exploring, my bat friend. Same for you. You could go and pinch that village. That would be uh, that would be sneaky. But I actually want you. I'd rather have you go around here. Okay. So we've got a protector drone back there, blocking the street. You come down there. You can't be attacked. Could put a ghost here, only one person can attack it, which means it shouldn't be killable. And everyone else just get into position so that next time you can take some uh, you can take the fight. Now there is a ghost here. And that ghost can get round. It'd be nice to block that off. And I can block it off with a ghost of my own. Okay, this looks like a good position to fight from. Um, Galas might take a, a lot of heavy hits here. It's, he's going to get poisoned for a start, but he does have the ability that allows him to drain, so I think he won't die. And that's the crucial thing. Seems like the enemy is pursuing the minimal damage strategy. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I was expecting that someone would actually try and hurt me <laughs> in that round, <laughs> to put it bluntly, um, and no one did. So I guess I get a, I get to hurt them. All right, that's good. Okay, Lethrede the Fire Fairy is almost at full. Um, now, Kesha, now I, I need to make sure that I can clear what's going on up here. Um, so we've got an archer here, and I can go berserk on this archer. Okay, a lot more punches in there than I expected. Now, even if a level 1 unit does decide to attack Felor and Felor goes berserk, he's going to level up if he kills it. So, this is a very good position for him to be in. Alright, healer unit can try and get the kill here. Good. She's relatively close to an after maximum level as well, which is nice. Um, and so now it's all about who I use to kill this guy, and it's I want it to be someone good in melee. So maybe actually this is a job for Galas. He can't kill it, but he can do a bit of damage. Hmm, not much damage. As a as as someone who fights skeletons. Gallus is not that useful. He's basically mostly useful for tanking damage at this particular point. A um, little bit worried here about uh, about old Scythe, um, tempting to retreat. But then again, there is a, a demon here in the water who I could attack and probably finish off.
Gonna move back a little bit. Okay. Alright, some slightly bad luck over here. Bats, come and finish the job. Or just get yourself whooped, that's fine too. Alright, this ghost is going to come in and do a sacrificial thing. Try and protect the spectre. Alright, someone can kill a demon, that's good. Um, next crucial thing is to be able to kill this demon. Ram Ramijinempo. Well, Kashado is just going to come down here, because he's a beast. He only needs two hits to kill this skeleton. Alright, Alinea, um, you'll get 40% wherever you stand, so maybe you come stand over here. You take a tad of damage, that's okay. You're actually quite close to another level up, which is cool. And your after maximum level advancements are crazy cool. Um, and now, honestly, at this stage I'm not all that worried about the potential damage that, that these undead units could do to me. I probably That's the kind of thing that, you know, it's it, pride comes before a fall, but... Okay, my dread bat could try and kill it. Probably succeed. Maybe succeed. Yeah, succeed. And lovely drain ability, of course. And now, it looks like Scythe is going to be safe. Um, I think probably they're going to try and kill this, this bat, and that is absolutely fine by me. This bat, meanwhile, is going to continue his scouting endeavours, but this map is... this is obviously um, a super linear map. They're not actually trying very hard to... Uh, to make this map um, particularly interesting from that perspective. Um, it's just run south and fight things. Okay, now, if I move the spectre in to attack this skeleton, the spectre will be, in principle, subject to the necromancer's attacks. So I don't want to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is bring him around here and attack this ghoul. Now, I, now what's, what's not quite clear to me is whether I should try and get Aerithan to get the kill. Because if he runs in here, um, he's going to be vulnerable. He's going to be attackable by quite a lot of units. I think it's best to let this ghost try and get the kill. Alright, good. Um, so now, the unit I'm most worried about here is obviously the Rayblade. Um, they can attack a variety of my arcane units if they want to. They could attack the Dread Bat, but they wouldn't kill it um, unless they get incredibly lucky. Um, they can, I think, not quite attack Elinia. Um, so this is all looking good. Um, the one thing I'm going to do is bring Igor up here. So if anyone has a desperate urge to attack Igor, they can do that as well and then he'll get healed. Erethan, you're just going to move up behind. And if you're there, then no one can attack you. Alright, hopefully no losses other than, other than this bat, but we shall see. And if the Rayblade decides to go for the bat, then that obviously entails that it hasn't decided to go for anyone else, which is great. the ghost survives. Oh, you poisoned my dread bat. That's annoying. Alright, see how easily these guys lose health. That's the interesting part about them. Now, there's a necromancer here. Not many people can reach the necromancer, but Malkashar can. First, though, I'm just going to wipe things off a bit over here. Okay, that doesn't really count as wiping anything up, does it? Um,
Is it now? Okay. Maybe you. Maybe you. No, you're gonna not, you're gonna do very very little damage there. What about you, Erethan? Not great either. All right. Well, let's let you get in and maybe see if we can get Erethan to get the kill. Ah, well, that's nice. All right, Erethan's nearly at the level. Um, next big thing is going to be taking out this ray blade. Down it goes, and now Alinea is one point away from the level. Fell or the Marshal, um, you can quite easily get a kill here, and then you'll go up a level. Okay, and that three hit points again is quite useful for you. Alright, a few of my spectres can even get in on this fight, which is cool. First though, we should get rid of this guy. Um, you can't reach the necromancer anyway, or maybe you will if other people kill it. Yalas can't reach the necromancer. So Thinia. And then maybe one of these ghosts can get the kill. I'd quite like to have another couple of leveled up ghosts at this point. Good, you're pretty close. And now basically all my spectres can reach. You can grab this house for me, because you need the healing. Hmm. Sending in Malkashar straight away is reckless, because he could take half of his health in damage. 44 damage he might take here. He can only attack in these two squares. You can get around the side. You can't. So let's start out with a tough spectre, like Slashy, who hasn't taken any damage. Alright, can't take damage, can't deal damage either, apparently. Um, Igor, you can come all the way around and attack him in the back. Okay, we see some enemies now, but neither of them can reach me from here. Not doing great on the damage front. It looks like it is going to be mostly up to Malkashar after all. But let's see what, uh, what Blady can do. Okay, that wasn't terrible. So now, Malkashar, you need three hits. Which you didn't quite get. And that now means, I think, that Igor is going to get zapped by this guy next turn. Because he's not going to want to die. He can't move very far. Kind of surprised by that, actually. It uh, seems like a situation where I can't, could and should have got the kill. He could even go for Malkashar and cause me to lose, but that would be bonkers. All right, you can reach this house, so whoever goes there is going to get protected roamed. So that means I want you actually to get some health before you do that. You too. I don't want anyone to just die. That would be a waste. You keep scouting. Not that there's much more to scout at this point, but we can see a little bit more thanks to you. Alright. 
<laughs> yeah, thought that was what was going to happen. Now, what's cool now is I've got a range of uh, of units I could give this level three kill to, um, and it's tempting to start with Aerithan. Uh, but what I'm actually going to start with is this is Slashy the Spectre going and attacking the Protector Drone. Well, that was very bad. Okay, Malkesha... Don't need you, don't want you to take any further damage. Erethan, are you ready to go for a hit or two? Just get yourself walloped, why don't you? This ghost, this ghost. Um, not quite enough damage, let's bring Felor up behind. So you get that extra damage bonus. Damn you, pathetic sub creatures! No! Okay, I could go for a Wraith or a Shadow. Um, so tough to decide always, every single time. I've got three Spectres, and maybe it would be tactically more useful to have a Night Gaunt, but the Spectres are so strong with their arcane damage against most Chaos units. Um, okay, so I'm going to go for a Wraith, and if the other one levels up, then it's going to be a Shadow. Okay, Gallas, go over here. And then this house is safe. Can I lure one of these guys out? This is a longbowman. They can both reach the same spot. Um... Maybe Blady is the right person to deal with this. If one longbowman wants to come in, it's not going to be the end of the world. So then you go... Um, you go down. You go... around... You actually stay there a moment and uh, get 10 health next turn. You come down here. And Igor, you just jump over here and get a little bit more health. Do some more... Sp oh! Only a creature heavy as a mountain would make such loud steps. Wait! Is that... Look, over there. Hey, it's a giant. A demon giant. Oh my. What do we have here? It's none other than the elves' popular comedy trio. The young lord, his pet lich, and the lady of light. I see you have finally decided to accept our invitation. How considerate of you. Trust me, our master is dying to see your faces. Enough with the great quips, you pathetic zealot. Did you not learn to not trifle with us after last time? Me? Pathetic, you say? Oh! You are but a stain on the long line of grand necromancers who have ever walked the land. Look at yourself, allying with these pathetical vermin. For what purpose? What has possessed you to defer to the will of Siael's children? How can a magnificent being such as you have fallen so low as to turn himself into a mockery of the legend he was in the times before Naya? How can the universe allow such a disgrace to even exist? Shut up! 
I am not a mindless servant following the orders of a cult of degenerates worshipping a deceased goddess. I am my own person. I have chosen my own fate. And before you know it, the entirety of Erdia shall kneel before me, starting with you. Let us put an end to this folly. Take that foul behemoth down and capture the Dark Priest. Okay, we got a boss fight on our hands. And there's some powerful undead here. We got Forefather, Ghast, another Ghast, some Spectres, and here we've got two Gut Wrencher Imps. A one Gut Wrencher Imp, one Blood Imp, and a mighty Armageddon Imp, uh, which is an amazing unit, to be honest. Level four, I mean, pfft. what a beast. 141 hit points. Malkashar is looking a bit wounded, so um, we might have to take this battle a little slow. First things first, you just uh, stay out of trouble. We can, we've already got all of the line of sight we need. Out comes the crossbow, longbowman, sorry. Takes a little bit of damage. And Purple has started recruiting. We've got elvish warrior spirits coming out. Oh, Gallas, sweet little misguided Gallas. Don't you feel his power around you? How can you expect to strike him down when he is already peering into your head? I don't know what you're talking about. You only waste your time fighting his power. Do you not know why he is called the voice of Uriah? Do you not know what fate awaits those fools who choose to ignore his sacred words? Gallas, what is this lich talking about? I have no idea. It's just more of his religious bravado. Okay, with a level 4 Armageddon Imp barreling towards us, that is where we're going to take our break. I will see you again for part 2.